What's up, Saucy Babies? You are now tuned into another episode of Saucy Streams. And this one, y'all, this one is piping hot because. tune into another episode of Saucy Streams and this one y'all this one is piping hot because y'all I just finished watching the season the fifth season of Selling Sunset and let me tell y'all I got some I got some opinions okay I got some opinions on this show and these girls like so um forgive me i literally did not know the show has been on i seen it was number one on netflix so i was like oh let me see what this is about like clearly everything that's number one on netflix is about to me like every time something's number one on netflix everybody's watching it and they're watching it for a season and this show different and this saucy drink is giving real tropical y'all it's giving southern sunset it is called a mango melon drop because you know the girls loved their lemon drops, okay? They love their lemon drops. But yeah, let's get right into it. <laughs> so, the first verse that I want to talk about is Mary. I don't know how I feel about Mary. I feel like because I didn't watch the other seasons and I just kind of jumped into the first season to get an idea of who they were and like you know her and um christine's friendship and stuff i just feel like mary in addition to a lot of the other girls are fake and they want to be liked and keep a tight knit kind of like alliance and they feel as if you know somebody does something out the ordinary or says something that goes against everybody else then everybody would just like not like them so i think they try to stay neutral and i think maddie's one of those people and i'm gonna tell you why i say that so there's a scene where amanda confronts christine at one of her events mind you this is a professional event this is to sell a house like this was supposed to make money over this well christine is and of course the company does too so Amanda chooses this time to speak to her about it. Shady as fuck. So it was a situation with Heather and, you know, she was getting married. And Christine allegedly said, you know, she doesn't give a shit about the wedding. How could she give a shit about something she wasn't invited to? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Honestly, I'm not going to put it past Christine. I don't know if she said that. But it's a possibility she did. Even still, you guys had a professional event. And don't bring that shit up at no event. Don't bring that shit up at no money maker. Like, that makes no sense. Talk to me one-on-one -on -one outside of the event when the shit is done. Do not try to embarrass me at my own event. So I think that's what Amanda tried to do. And now let's get into Mary. So while this whole shit is going on, it leads into the group. And then everybody jumps on Christine. You feel me? In the midst of this. It's only one person that takes up for Christine. I will get into her. That is my favorite person of the season. I just heard that she's a new addition. Great new addition, by the way. But, yeah. So, Mary, who is supposed to be the boss now, takes the initiative to say, I'm going to go have fun, guys. I'm going to go now. Basically, on some gets the fuck up and leaves the whole situation. While Christine is getting bullied, Christine starts crying. She walks away. You know, she feels as if, like, and I could completely understand where Christine came from because I wouldn't want nobody doing that to me in my event either. Whether or not we have beef, don't do that. We work for the same company. We're both representing the same people. You're, if you're making me look bad, you're making yourself look bad, and you're making the company look bad, period. So that was that. And I just feel like Maddie was she was just too complacent she was just too like allowing to let them do it and i understand that she has her problems with christine but at the end of the day we're all professionals you're supposed to be professional get it together mary so that's my little about mary other than that i just feel like she's very superficial 
Let's get into Christine now. I'm gonna get into Christine now only because I feel like I have a good amount to say about Christine. Cause I feel like from this season, I don't know how she was in other seasons. Like I said, I just started watching season one. Clearly, she's been vindictive, but I feel like this season she was really picked on. I feel like as a grown woman, when you are beefing with people and you are working with them, you want to keep a good work environment. And I feel like Christine also didn't bring that to the table, which is why a lot of stuff was happening. And I just felt like the way that the girls handled Christine was in an inappropriate manner because I feel like when they did go to speak to her, they attacked her. And rather than trying to, you know, understand Christine, because I feel like Christine is the only, like, I feel like Christine is the way she is because of her insecurities, because of the fact that she got bullied, because of the fact that, you know, she was the tallest girl in high school, she had a growth spurt, yada, yada, whatever he's saying to you for me. I feel like she has trauma, so she does cover up her, you know, her insecurities and her emotions with humor. I feel like that's her biggest defense mechanism. So... With a lot of girls being close to Christine, I feel like a lot of girls already seen that. And it is understandable as to why they did shy away from Christine. Now, the people that were there for Christine from day one and knew how Christine rocked, that's supposed to be really her friends. I think Christine burned bridges with them. I don't know what happened in the other seasons for her to have no friends, you feel me? But to me, I felt as if she could have had one person. Because she did say two people were supposed to be still her friends. And those two people were still talking about her behind her back. And, you know, just not defending her in any way, shape, or form. And I think Christine does have a good heart. She just comes off in a different kind of way. You feel me? So, I just... I don't know. When it comes down to Christine, I feel like she's a bad bitch, number one. She's a bad bitch. She knows how to dress her ass off. She's stylish as fuck. And I think, you know, one of the insecurities, what I think one of the reasons why she's like that is because of her insecurities as well. Like, she knew that she she built the confidence from her insecurities, but she still struggles with a lot of other things you know what i'm saying what? might be a little confusing but from a soon to be counselor slash therapist slash you know all that good shit she's just traumatized that's my story and i'm sticking to it i love you christine i got you homie <laughs> but oh but one thing that did fuck me up Christine, girl, if you did do that shit at the end of the season, I won't spoil it for y'all, but I know by now a lot of y'all watched it. Christine, if you genuinely try to fuck up shit at your own company by bribing somebody else to use you as a realtor, girl, bad move. Seriously, what the fuck are you doing? You don't do that. That's fucking up. You know, feel me? Like, y'all both work for the organization. Like I said, it's a professional kind of way to go about things. There's a professional way to go about things. And, sweetie, that was very unethical. I definitely can agree with Maddie when she said that. Christine, girl, I hope you figure it out. If that was your way of exiting, then bitch, you left with a bang. Okay. Surprise, motherfucker. You love the bang. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> so, let's get into... Who else saw this to I'm not going to speak about everybody because there were only a few ladies that actually, like, really, like, stood out to me the most that I feel like should be spoken about. Oh, Chriselle. Okay. Chriselle, honey. 
I want to like you so bad, but I feel like you play victim so much and you don't know how to defend yourself. I feel as if you hide behind the fact that, you know, you came into the company and I assumed you are the newest person there. And you feel me? You use that as a way to, you know, get through everything. And I feel as if there were a lot of moments where you could have stood up for yourself, um, especially towards Christine. And instead of acting like all nervous and I feel like honestly for sure, I'm not even gonna go in on you about that because that whole Christine shit is nothing in comparison to what happened to you at the end of the season, girl. I can't believe Jason did that shit. I can't believe he <laughs> He tried it. <laughs> like bro, I thought everything was good. I genuinely empathize with you, Christine. I feel as if, you know, that was a low move because you guys seem as if y'all was leaning in towards that, y'all was taking steps towards that, and then to just be like, no, that is a deal breaker. And honey, you deserve to be happy, so go find some love, boo boo. <laughs> but yeah, um, Chriselle. It's a love hate relationship with me and Chriselle. Just because her and Christine. I'm a little biased. But let's get into Emma. Emma. So, Emma reminds me of the typical, like, Cali girl. Typical white Cali girl. She reminds me of one of those. She dresses super cute. Don't get me wrong. She's super cute. She dresses super cute. She talks super cute. It could be a little annoying sometimes because she is, like I said, the typical Cali girl. Um, and she talks like this. But, um, so, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, she, Emma, I feel like, also didn't really have a backbone. I feel like she, there were also opportunities for her to talk to Christine and hash it out if she really wanted to. Christine gave her the opportunity. She was like, you know, let's be friends. Uh, uh, like, give me a chance. Emma sat there and said, okay. Rather than being like, bitch, I really don't like you. I really don't want to be your friend. Like, we're not going to do this. We can work together. We can keep it cordial. And that's that. Um, I feel like as if for you to be that way... And then behind, like, you know, say okay and agree to be somebody's friend. And then, you know, still have a lot of animosity towards them. It's just pointless. Don't don't even be their friend. Don't even be their friend. It doesn't make sense. Because what happened next, Christine clearly didn't want to be your friend. <laughs> She seen that you was shaking up and she used that to her advantage within the company. And like I said, that, that could have fucked Christine up in the long run. We're going to see. I don't know how, to, how it's going to go for the next season, you know. But I'm thinking Christine may not be on the show or they may. I don't know. I don't know. Sis might get her own shit. You feel me? Because she's a boss bitch. But yeah. And last but not least, let's get into my girl, Chelsea. OMG, she is the epitome of a powerful black woman, okay? She screams confidence. She screams. She screams, y'all. She screams confidence. She screams style. She screams fashion. She screams self-awareness. She screams all those things she screams loyalty you feel me like one thing about chelsea she befriended christine and she stayed loyal to christine even with me and the other girls getting the other um you know opinions about christine from the other girls and hearing stories about christine she still stayed loyal to christine chelsea was the only one to stick up for christine when sorry i got thirsty Chelsea was the only one to stick up for Christine when all the girls were ganging up on her. And she was like, you know, it's giving bullying. Point blank simple. 
point blank period <laughs> like and i love that she is so blunt and despite the fact that she is cool with christine she is able to open up and speak to the other girl and let them know like you know christine's my girl and she's gonna forever be my girl i'm loyal to her but we are in a professional environment so i would like to be cordial with y'all and so we can do what the fuck we gotta do you feel me and i respect that a hundred a hundred percent she let them know she doesn't want them to have any prior notions or ideas about her because you know of her being friends with christine but at the end of the day it's the job they're here to make money and that's what it is niggas is here to sell houses like what the fuck are we arguing and having drama for you feel me and i totally understand chelsea so i feel like she has been my favorite throughout the whole season she has showed so much throughout the whole season i feel like a lot of the other girls did not show um and i can see that a lot of the other girls are intimidated by her and i think chelsea is about to kill kill selling sunset okay this was such an amazing addition thank you guys for putting her on the show i didn't even watch the show before but because of the fact that she got put on the show and the fact that it was number one on netflix i tuned the fuck in okay we love to see representation of ourselves and to see a powerful black woman with confidence self-awareness love loyalty honesty just all great qualities it's just a great thing to see and i enjoyed watching still and sunset it was an amazing season i can see why it's number one netflix keeps doing your thing nice the girls on Southern Sunset keep doing y'all thing. Y'all are awesome boss ass bitches. Top two, Christine and Chelsea. Don't shoot the messenger. But y'all are awesome boss ass bitches. Jason and Brett. Get it the fuck together, all right? Y'all gonna have to settle down at some time. At some time. At some time. You guys are, what, like pushing 40? You guys will never want to get married, have kids, nothing. You just want to be bachelors forever because y'all got money. Well, then be a sugar daddy or something. Don't just be, you feel me? Don't just not do nothing for the woman. <laughs> like, something. Have some kids. Build your legacy. Something. Okay? But that's all I got to say about the show. I'm about to down this because y'all know how we get down. Let's get into our game. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be honest. And this cup is way bigger than all of my other cups, okay? So, so, it's going to take me a little while. But we're going to do this. Almost there. Almost there. Whew. I feel like it's going to my head already. But y'all know I got my water. Because as soon as I drink this, literally, y'all, I down at least a bottle, two bottles, or whatever of water. I like to get saucy, but I like to be saucy responsibly. You feel me? We sauce responsibly out here. Y'all know the vibe. All right, let's get this last gulps in. And boom, we are finished with our mango melon drop. Y'all, this shit was so tropical. It tasted like candy. I know I tell y'all that about all my drinks. I'm over here drooling. That's how, that's how true it is, y'all. That's how true it is. But it's so good. I enjoyed this and I feel it. I'm about to go drink some water and go relax, y'all. Remember, if you tuned in with me and you got your cup too, which you should have a little something, something. If you don't, it's cool too. You don't discriminate over here. We love everybody. Get saucy how you get saucy. Just remember to source responsibly. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. And of course, follow us on Instagram at straight up source with three underscores. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in. Our menu is dropping soon. If you tune in on Instagram, you'll see the countdown. It's about to be a saucy spring and a saucy summer, y'all. 
It's your girl, Saucy Girl Desi. This was another amazing Saucy Streams. Thank you guys for tuning in. Saucy Girl Desi out. Love y'all. What's up, Saucy Baby? So today's drink was inspired by Southern Sunset. It's called a Mango Melon Drop. We're going to start with our Bacardi rum first. Coconut rum, that is. <laughs> so we're going to pour it right on up. And guys, don't be stingy with the Bacardi, y'all. Don't be stingy with the coconut rum. Fill it to a good amount because the rest of these ingredients are just going to make it pop even more. The next ingredient is the Kinky Vodka. This one is the Aloha edition. It's given Hawaiian. It's given tropical. It's given all those good up flavors. So we're just going to put a little dash of that in there. <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna get crazy with our melon ingredients. Y'all, it would not be a mango melon drop without the watermelon in the melon, okay? So we have some watermelon liqueur, some melon liqueur, and some watermelon tequila. OMG. It's about to get saucy, y'all. So we're gonna start off with our melon liqueur first. It's giving that nice green. We're gonna pour it right on up. Just enough to give it enough color. Then we're gonna take our watermelon liqueur. Y'all, this is actually really good. I was honestly scared to get this, but the flavor is actually amazing in drinks. Quotations in drinks. <laughs> so you just put a little splash in there, give it a little bit more color. And now we're gonna wow out with this watermelon tequila. This is like candy, y'all. This has always been one of my favorite drink mixers to use. It always gives it like a candy flavor, like I promise you. And guys, and once that's in there, we're gonna add some mango nectar. Y'all already know I love my mango nectar. And of course, y'all, what are we making? A mango melon drop. It would not be a mango melon drop without that mango. So we're going to pour it right on up. The thickness of the nectar just gives this drink such a cool effect. Like, look at that, y'all. Mm, so good. It's giving fake like a lava lamp, y'all. <laughs> and here you have it, our mango melon drop. Mm -mm -mm. So our ingredients, kinky vodka, our Bacardi coconut rum, watermelon liqueur, that lip smacking, some melon liqueur, some watermelon tequila, and some mango nectar. Get saucy, sauce responsibly.